Well, today it would probably be a drama, but tomorrow it could be a comedy. It's never going to be a tragedy, I know that. I don't think it would be a drama. I, you know, it, it, it's uh, real. It would be real. It'd just be how life is, really. The ups and the downs. You know, that's enough to send anyone crazy, isn't it, really? <laughs> the minute. A drama. A nice family drama about fostering children and uh, birth children living together and not have anything different uh, in any way. A comedy, because I think as he's, as he's got older, he's got smarter and he tries and outsmarts me and we, we bounce off of each other sometimes now. what would happen to our children. So that's sort of the motivation that we came into it. We'd like somebody out there to be able to come in and look after our children. I don't. I think there are so many children that need stability, consistency, fairness, truth, and a, a good quality of experience that I don't see why you shouldn't put yourself forward to do it. There's no reason why not. It's just ordinary people. You could never go into fostering half-hearted. You've got to go into fostering because you want to make a difference to a child's life and you want to make the child's life better. Six years I'm here and I love it and it's really good. But I think people do get sometimes scared thinking that, oh, they won't be able to do it. They won't be. But once they start doing it, everything slowly, slowly falls in its place. With foster care, you think, you know, it's, it's the older generation, people that have had their children and they've moved on. At first I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm old enough, I don't know if I can do it because I'm renting a property and I don't own a house. And, you know, you think, you know, am I good enough to do it? A lot of people I've talked to have, oh, well, yeah, but what happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? I said, well, you've got the support. I said, you're not on your own. It's all a bunch of other professionals as well that are helping you look after that child. My worker knows everything there is to know about me and my life and my children and my history. I mean, I trust her implicitly, really, to make a decision that would be right for my family. When we first originally started fostering, we went on to what it was called as planned respite. So we know which children were coming and we know how long they were staying for. The process usually is that <laughs> about one o'clock on Saturday morning, we get a phone call. Um, there's a little baby coming to placement. Can you take care of this child for the weekend? And it's, yeah, bring them round and... We tend up having one or two babies at the weekend. Organised chaos. I've had a, a little person come and stay overnight um, as a planned um, respite. I've also had a young person come along and stay for longer than anticipated, you know, n not just three weeks, but eight months. It's task-centred, which means um, you're there to take a child and look after them until they can be moved on to adoption or go back to their own family. You can put your preferences across and I think then it just depends who's in the most need and they were looking for long-term foster carers for these two boys and that was our preference. They try to make it work for everybody. You don't have to do anything that you're not comfortable with doing. You don't have to take children. I've said no. You know, you can stay within your own comfort zone. Well the long term replacement we've got now, he came to us when he was five, he's now seven so we made that decision to keep this little child as long term. He has learning difficulties um, as far as we're seeing into the future is that we will see him through all his education, through into his teens and hopefully the rest of his life. Long term with the two boys that I've got is until they're 18. I have made a very big commitment yeah but like I say it just gets more and more rewarding. I know that's a cliche, but when he sits next to you and, and he just puts my arm around him and then he'll just snuggle up and that, you know, that's come, we've come a long way. The core training is really good, you know, all the health and safety and the, the safeguarding and the first aid, you know, all the basics the, the, that you have to do. But thereafter, when you can get involved with new initiatives that Staffordshire are bringing in, it just encourages you to be a better carer and in fact a better parent you don't just stand outside you get inside and you understand why the child's feeling what it is and it is wonderful to find out that you can approach something in a different light and get a better result the child tends to help you you look through the background it obviously um that gives you a good indication of what they've what they've been brought up with and what they've had to deal with and then you learn to 
adapt with that and help them bring them through and bring them to where they should be. Children can relate to each other. We sometimes get told by our child what we're doing wrong. You're learning all the time. I mean, I'm even learning off my own children how to treat another child. You get some very good social workers. Obviously, they're all busy because so they've got so, such big caseloads. But yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to pick up the phone if you've got something that you're not sure about, give them the ring and they can reassure you and put you on the right tracks. The most challenging thing for me so far, anyway, has been um, the dynamics with my own children, my, my own daughters, because it does inevitably impact on their life, massively so. My eldest daughter, she actually spoke to our supporting worker from her own perspective, without me being involved, talk about her concerns. My son was a bit jealous of the little girl. Didn't really want to share, you know, didn't want to share mum and dad. But, I mean, it took probably two weeks and he was fine looking after her, you know, like brother and sister. With us having three of our own children, each child, when they come in, can attach to a different child which really helps them with the speech, with the language, and learning to fit in with the family dynamics. We had to start straight away and say, right, you love us in a different way. You love us as carers, as people, whereas he loves his mum as his mum. You do become attached, but I think that's a good thing. And always remember that the children aren't your own. It's not all roses, and there's been times where the girls have gone, you know what, Mum, I don't know whether we can do this. But then there's also been times when my youngest, who's 12, has gone, Mum, we can do this. We're doing it. We can do it. Well, when she came, um, she stood in the same spot for about three days, didn't interact, didn't look at you. If you tell them that they're being good, they'll do something immediately to make you think, no, I'm not good, I'm, I'm bad. But you just have to keep chipping away at it, showing them that it doesn't matter how bad they are, that they, you're not getting rid of them. She didn't really know what a hug was or, you know, what affection was. And, and now gives you a hug when she's happy, you know, experiencing affection or maybe for the first time. And it's you that's doing that for them. They're funny, you know, they... And they're learning all the time. They ask lots of questions. It's just refreshing to wake up every morning knowing that Today is going to be nowhere near like it was yesterday. Oh, she can have her tantrums, <laughs> as any child can. But yeah, it's, uh, it's easily dealt with. It means that she's confident enough to do that, which is a good thing. It's a positive, really. When I came to the Staffordshire, I could not believe. They placed me with two English children, and I was really chuffed. And I said, wow, this is it. This is the place for me. That they actually given me English children that I wanted to look after, no matter who they were. This is one thing I really like about Staffordshire. They don't make any difference. They all, they make everybody equal one. You know, they don't look at the um, minority, ethnic, or anything. It's a life-changing experience. And it's, it's like when you're in the hospital and your first child's born and you get all their emotions and feelings. It's just the same as when a foster child comes into, in, into your care. She, she just hadn't really had the opportunity, I don't think, to, um, to develop her unique personality. And, um, you know, when she left me, which was only two months later, she was a little girl with a fantastic personality with a lot to give. She's going to give her family going forward loads of enjoyment, loads of fun, lots of happiness, and she is where she should be and so that feels good. When she left me, I literally walked her up the path and popped her in the car and said, bye-bye, have a nice time. And uh, I knew she was going where she should be. We had a, a young lad that we were supposed to have originally for two weeks that ended up 18 months. Uh, we did a lot of work with social services and with his mother, and we eventually, he, he got took off the, the uh, at-risk register back with his mother, and you've helped him to get there. And I don't think any job I've ever done in civilian life or even in the Air Force would compare to that.